when I was in first year in college, I hacked into 86 organizations on a single day. 86? Yeah, so that was only, they all were on one server or? Different servers, but a single CV. Oh, okay. Now I reported to all of them because the kind of data that I had was very crucial. Mm. It could disrupt their business. I reported to all 86 of them. To my utter surprise, none of them replied. In an organization, there is a cyber risk. Mm. Now the organization is taking five weeks to come to a decision how to mitigate that risk. Mm. As a hacker, I have that five weeks window to get into the organization because the risk is still pertaining. They're not being proactive with the decision making. It's all reactive that we have seen, mm. right? People need to get proactive. And that's where the whole decision making thing comes. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Gaurav Batra show. Today, I have an interesting topic and most worried one for the organizations that the decision which I am making about cybersecurity, either it's related to the investment tool or any other implementation I need to do. Am I on the right track or not? Am I making the right decision? Or is there something else I need to consider? The ROI which I am going to get, is it going to happen to me? The BIA which I am doing, is it right or not? So to answer all those questions, I have with me Sanket Sarkar. He is founder of Zeron, And we will learn from him how these problems or issues can be resolved. And also how Zeron is doing this differently. Let's hear him out. Hi Sangeet, welcome Hi. to the GV show. Thank you. Thanks for the time and uh, as I announced that you know the topic which we have is the informed decision making, right? Uh, before we deep dive into that particular topic, let's uh, hear from you what Zeron do and how your journey to a founder starts. Sure, so Zeron is a single point of truth for cyber security in organizations and this particular title was given to us by one of our customers. Okay. It is a cyber risk posture management platform. What it does, it, it brings all the stakeholders who are involved in the decision making for cyber security in organizations mm -hmm. into a single pane so that they can make those informed decisions. Okay. It's a SaaS platform where it comes and sits on top of the existing security infrastructure of an organization and generates those unique KPIs and KRIs, which enables the organization to make those decisions. Okay, when we say decisions, what all comes in those decisions? Investments, okay. security initiatives, strategies, compliances, mandates, and also strategic decisions in terms of where to deploy what. And uh, how you conclude that this is a problem which need to be solved, like, you know, there are many decisions, but people are not able to take these decisions or they are doing it wrongly. When you identify this and when it comes to the mind that no, Sanket will come and you know solve this. Right, so I'm a hacker by heart. It has been a decade I'm into the field of hacking. I started when I was in class 11. And uh, while I was in... So that's the time when I started with, which intrigued me was a code which could make the LED lights dance in the mechanical keyboard we used to ha have at uh, that okay. point of time on a oh, music beat. Yeah. But when I was in first year in college, I hacked into 86 organizations on a single day. 86? Yeah, so that was only, they all were on one server or? Different servers, but a single CV. Oh, okay. Now I reported to all of them because the kind of data that I had was very crucial. Mm. It could disrupt their business. I reported to all 86 of them. To my utter surprise, none of them replied. Mm. So through a few of the resources, I almost talked to 80 of the organizations and tried to find out. Now the security people, they understood that there was a problem. Mm. But they were not being able to convince into the management that it's a problem. And still we have that mindset. Like if it's not affecting my business, it's not mm. a problem. We have seen what has happened in the last few years with these kind of uh, attitude. But that was a time when I understood there is a problem with respect to the stakeholders trust, okay. right? Which essentially goes on to have problem in the decision making of the organization in terms of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll just laymanize this. If you talk to people, even the security people or anyone, they would say, and it's a common, if we Google it, what's the weakest link in terms of cybersecurity? It's humans. I bet to differ on that. It's not humans. It's the decision making. So take for example, in an organization, actually it boils down to humans, but I'll come to that later. But in an organization, there is a cyber risk. Hmm. Now the organization is taking five weeks to come to a decision how to mitigate that risk. Hmm. As a hacker, I have that five weeks window to get into the organization because the risk is still pertaining. They're not being proactive with the decision making. It's all reactive that we have seen, right? People need to get proactive. And that's where the whole decision making thing comes. So just think about this, what happens? There's a risk. The CISO would go to the management or the operations or the finance. Now they would ask a lot of information from there, this, that and all. Then the board would ask a lot of questions. Why is this going on? Why are you implementing this? We've already spent this much. Hmm. This goes in a loop in the decision making circle, which ultimately leads to a lot number of breaches. What if, if the management could see what they want to see? Hmm. They want to see where is the money being deployed? They can see that. They can see if this goes south, what's the impact on the organization? So we found out all these things uh, when I was in second year in college actually. Okay. But didn't start at that point of time because I wanted to understand more and go into organizations. Mm -hmm. So I had walked around with 80 plus, not 80, around 76 to be exact, 76 organizations. And uh, found out that yes, this was really a problem. And then formulated this, launched it last to last year actually. So yes. By the way, how many yeah. years uh, you did your college bandits? Uh, so when did I pass out? Yeah. So. Uh, I passed out in 2019. 19. Okay. So it's four years. Yeah. Because you started in first year, second year, I was just trying to calculate how much, <laughs> how long it took to you know deploy the tool. So when you, uh, actually you're talking about decision making and you're saying so we had those traditional methods like where you go with the BIA, ROI and asset management and looking into you know what countermeasures i am putting and what is the inherent risk or residual risk so you have to do all those things uh, we do that's only yeah. in part of right this what is the other specialized stuff which has been done on sure that? so thing is you take out a framework right so if you look into organizations there are frameworks like high trust there are other frameworks as well but what happens in this is it becomes too generic for an organization operating in India and for an organization operating in Singapore, US or any other place, the scenarios are different. And it is very important of what is the driving factor in that organization. It might be a mandate, it might be a compliance, it might be any other thing. So contextualizing that in terms of the posture of the organization is very important, which no one else is doing in the market right now. Mm -hmm. That's what's special about Zeron. It contextualizes with respect to your organization. So I'll just give an uh, that example. Will, yes, that will help. Yeah, I'll just give an example, which uh, people can relate to their day to day life, right? People go to yoga centers, people go to gym, but when you need more uh, efficiency or you need more cut to your context, you have personal trainers. That does not go to a generic thing. Yeah. You have personal dietitian, you have personal uh, yoga trainers, you have personal doctors who understand your body, your shape and all those, if I talk, your posture better than anyone else. So that's what's the important of contextualization in terms of the organization. Okay. So if you are putting the contextualization in that particular fashion, I'd say, I go to the doctor, let's say, I have something medication to the BP, right? So I can see how it's improving. Exactly. If I go to the uh, gym and start personal training, personal diet, I can see how the weight loss is going. Exactly. What parameters we can see here and how you will validate that this program or this tool is working for me. Sure. So what happens here is we have got feeds, right? From 16 different sources. Okay. We have our own servers, CTI servers as well. And the particular model that we use for this uh, increase in terms of the quantification, if I speak in the monetary value, Something that we used just for a validation purpose, the particular model, the base model which we did, has been taken up by the European Union to deploy in the European Union cybersecurity roadmap. Okay. We use the Gordon Loeb model as the base. 
we do not use any model which takes assumptions. In our model, there are no assumptions. It's all real data. Mm -hmm. And we do not come and say, so this is what we thought and this is what should be. It's derived from the data of the organization. Okay. And uh, one more thing is, what we devised is, we take into consideration the finances of a particular region, taking into consideration the security markets of that organization, of that particular region, not organization, of that particular region. So if in India, the mid cap, large cap indexes gives the idea of the financial economics of this region. So that's what makes it more unique. The percent of, of error, if I talk about the error margin, it's around two to 3% in zero. Oh, and nice. compared to the other models that are there, it's around 45% error margin that the other models have. Uh -huh. Okay, so two to 3% is really a great, great number. And uh, would you like to justify these number with any success case studies or some implementation which has done where you have um, achieved these results? Sure, so I can talk about a few of the clients who are with, mm -hmm. with whom we have been working, right? We have been working with uh, customers like NCash, customers like Discover Dollar, okay. uh, customers like Aditya Billa Capital. Right, so we have been implementing here and they have seen great values. In every, each of these uh, customers, the use cases were a bit different. I won't say for them because Zeron is a vast platform. There are a lot of use cases that people can derive from it. And we as a company who is building this product, we do not limit our customers to the particular use case. They can feel out which use case is best fits for them. They. Oh, can test it. And to use your tool, any prerequisite I need to have, like, you know, because any fundamental data postures, because let's say when, if I'm going to have the better decision making, do I need to have something ready, which I need to feed to your tool and then get the output? So there are two scenarios to it. For organizations who are uh, mature, uh, at least a, they have a baseline for cybersecurity, right? And uh, they take cybersecurity seriously. So Zeron as an organization do not we do not entertain customers who are not serious about cybersecurity because there are organizations, right? And we do not want to go in that uh, space where we need to come and tell them cybersecurity is serious because mm -hmm. that's a very crucial space. You have are contributing in that field, I know a lot, yeah. but that's not a space that, uh, because that takes a lot of effort. We want to work in that particular niche where mm -hmm. people care about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So if they have a baseline, it's good for us. If they do not have a baseline, we can create that baseline for them through Zeron itself. How? This thing called Zensers, which is an agent which goes and sits. Mm -hmm. But people who already have multiple EDR, DLP and all, they already have those agents already placed. They do not want another agent to come in. For them, it's an agentless integration that happens with the existing solutions. Okay. So that's how it works. Okay, fair enough. I think uh, a great tool and uh... If I will ask you to talk to my audience uh, directly, right? Uh, what you will like to tell about Zenon and what's your vision uh, in future? Sure. So if I talk about this one vision and which we are already working on, it's to be the single point of truth for cybersecurity. Any decision that you make, it might be with respect to how much cyber insurance you should be going for. What are the next steps that you should be taking in your organizations? Uh, want to have a unified decision making with respect to all the stakeholders, want to understand which department is at most threat. All of these, Zeron is a single answer. If you just want to get in touch, just hit up Zeron.1 in Google and you will get it. Awesome, awesome. And uh, thank you, uh, Sanket. It was quite insightful talking to you. So on the ritual side, uh, uh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, GB. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, Guys, till then, be safe, do explore Zeron, and I'll see you next Sunday.